Welcome to another art lesson from Art Wandering Studios. I hope you have done a few of the other lessons I taped. I think this is lesson five, um, but you might not be doing them in order, especially, especially if you're some of my art students that are doing this um, online. So I am just hanging out today chilling. I didn't really get too fixed up today as you can tell from my hat, but we are going to dive into something kind of fun and, and really imaginative today. So we are going to talk about both dead and a live artist first. So, but they all use one style of art, a 20th century art movement called cubism. Cubism is an art movement that, instead of using forms, used just basic geometric shapes like the square, the heart, the triangle. And if you can draw those, you can nail this project and have so much fun with it. Because we are going to create an abstract face in the style of cubism, kind of encompassing all three artists we're going to talk about for about two minutes each because there's really cool YouTube videos already created on each one of these artists and I will put them in my video links on my art channel YouTube page. So please make sure to investigate these three artists a little bit more um, after this lesson. But the first one I want to talk to you about is Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso is no longer alive. He died in 1973, oddly the same year I was born. So I never got to meet Pablo, but in the history of art, this is not that long ago. So he's more of a contemporary modern artist. Um, but he actually um, is a Spanish artist and he's most famous for his Guernica painting that was painted um, really as an expression of the horror of the Spanish Civil War. And in particular, the bombing that took place um, in 1937. And it's actually titled Guernica 1937. And you can see in this piece the basic geometric shapes on a very interesting perspective, which is a very flat plane. It's abstract, but the emotion is really obvious. The horror and how the artist is feeling and how many people felt during that time is really obvious. Um, but Paulo Picasso really is a founding father of Cubism and he actually lived a really long life because he was born in 1881 and he's an interesting character. He's more of a great artist than I'd say a great person. Um, if you look into his life, you may or may not agree with me, but you'll probably agree with me on that note. So let's just focus on his art. Um, he also painted three musicians which I think is the most obvious painting that he did that really symbolizes this style of cubism that he created along with George Brock, really. Um, but this was done in 1921. Now, more like the image of the abstract face that we are going to be creating later on in the video um, with oil pastels and watercolor, so it's going to be a mixed media project. Um, the Three Musicians was a collage oil painting done in 1921. And moving on to another artist that is still alive. And she is a Canadian artist, female artist. And her name is Sandra Selbury. Don't know how to say that. But let's just call her Sandra. Um, so Sandra is still alive in Canada. And you can definitely tell that she was influenced by the Cubist. And you can see a lot of Pablo Picasso in her work. And she just adds a little bit of whim to it. Um, she was born in the 1960s in Toronto. She's making a living off of her art still today. And she uses, uses emotion or thought. And she pairs each emotion and thought with a color. And she's really into this inner peace, inner zen, inner vision. Um, and creating another sense when you're creating art. She paints what she feels and not what she sees. The last so artist that I usually talk quite a bit about in all of my art classes um, that I teach just because I am a Michigan public school teacher and this particular artist was born in Detroit, Michigan in 1955. I don't even need to look at my notes for Tyree. I've taught him so many times. Um, and 
what's super cool about Tyree besides he's still alive is I got to meet him in person. I don't remember if it was Delta College or SVSU, but I got to go hear him speak with another um, friend of mine who's also was an art teacher at the time. And he's just so cool. But what he did was created what's called the Heidelberg Project, which was created to revamp an area of the inner city of Detroit where he lived at the time that became so dangerous that people were scared to um, actually go down this street, which was part of his neighborhood. And he wanted to do something about it. So this is a cool way where an artist uses art to actually change the perspective of not just the people living in the community, but the greater community, which is Detroit, and it brought a lot of attention to the abandoned homes in Detroit because what he did was he painted these abandoned homes on the outside, on the inside, the sidewalks. He brought in um, something different from the other cubists, which makes him unique, but he brought in found objects and painted these found objects. And just if you look at his work that's popping up right now, if you're driving by, you would stop and look and be like, what is going on? Again, there's super cool videos on Tyree Guyton. Um, he's made his own videos, so I can't do it better than the artist speaking himself. So please go look at my linked videos and go check out Tyree Guyton. But he also used a Cubist style, and you can really start to see how past artists influence artists today. And that's why it's so important to learn about our history, I feel, before teaching about art a lot of times is that you need to learn from people that were better than you. The only way to get better as an artist is to look at who nailed it. I mean, let's start there. And then once you build up this book in your mind, if you will, of famous artists, and you have a whole bunch of art styles, art techniques, then you're really ready to break away into a studio art um, format and really start creating your own art. So let's go ahead, I'm going to stop there, and we're going to go ahead and we are going to do an art project. We're going to create a face in the style of cubism, really encompassing all three of these artists, but you're going to be creating your own. So none of these should look the same. They should all look different. So I'm going to guide you through one example, and I want you to promise me that you are going to break out and you are going to do your own thing because all right let's get started you just need um get out your watercolor paper your watercolor and get out your oil pastels if you do not have those art supplies you can figure out how to do this on your own with what you have you could actually do this project on newspaper um you could use crayons on top of newspaper you could even make your own watercolors by mixing some food coloring with a little bit of water. So there's lots of ways that when you're desperate, sometimes you're the most creative. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start drawing our abstract face in cubism. And so I just have some watercolors. It doesn't really matter if they're tubed or in a palette, both will work. I've got some water ready to go. I've got a collection of brushes. Really, any brushes will work for you here. Obviously, watercolor brushes are going to be best. I've got my well. I got a pencil and eraser. I've got my watercolor tab. And I've got my sketchbook out so that I can doodle a little bit. Um, but I could not find my oil pastels. So I thought I'll just use crayons. So I mentioned that, you know, you can wing it and we're definitely gonna do that. I also have a nice cup of coffee ready to go because I'm just gonna kind of chill tonight because I feel like chilling and this is a good project to just kind of relax with. So let's first go ahead and think about drawing in the style of cubism. So I'm gonna set my watercolor paper aside. I just have my sketchbook out here. And we're going to start talking about cubism. So when you think of cubism, it is really just those basic geometric shapes. So think of shapes, the square, the heart, the triangle, 
An organic shape, which is undefined, can also be used. Um, you can use a circle. You could use an oval. You could use a diamond. And there's a lot more that you could consider. But we're just going to think about some of these basic shapes. And we're going to go ahead and draw an extract face, just thinking of those. So pick one of those shapes. Draw that, whatever shape you thought of, go ahead and draw it really large on your paper. I'm choosing a heart. All right, now choose another basic geometric shape for the eye. I'm going to choose a diamond. So I'm going to draw a diamond where my eye normally would be. Now for the other shape, you can choose a, a basic geometric shape or you could even use the traditional almond shape for an eye. Now what you do now is the fun part because now you're going to add details. There is no right or wrong way to add details. This is when it becomes so fun. Just go for it. I'm just going to go ahead and draw in some basic eye shapes. Again, you can make yours however you want. There's no wrong way to do this. There, and I might even add some eyebrows over here, and maybe I'll do the same thing over here. This is fun because you have no vision set in your mind about what it's going to be. And then erase some of those overlapping lines. So you want to erase overlapping lines as you go. Now you can just have fun and draw a whimsical nose or you could actually pick a geometric shape. I'm going to pick a geometric shape. So I'm just going to pick a rectangle. And I didn't draw my whole rectangle. If you need to, you certainly can or if you want to. Now once your rectangle shape is, then you want to add some details. So then I'm going to just go ahead. I might make a nostril here and erase this line just for fun. And maybe I want to swoop it. Whoop. This is why you really just want to use a regular two inch pencil to draw with. And I might just kind of draw a tip over here just for fun. Um, and I think I'm going to just go ahead and maybe angle it a little bit more. So notice what that you can morph your images as you go. And I'm going to give this an earring right here. Maybe it's a mole. You know, I think I want to make sure I turn it into an earring. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it into an earring abstractly. Kind of going that way. I mean, why not? And then you're going to add a mouth. So think of another shape for the mouth. Hmm. I think I'm going to do an organic mouth. Do, do, do. I'm going to erase this line. And then you need to change that shape into a mouth. And go ahead and add your details. I'm just having fun with it. Do, do, do. And then you're done with the basic face. Now do a couple of these where you are just going to pick a geometric shape for the face shape. Pick another geometric shape for an eye. Another geometric shape for the other eye. Pick another geometric shape for the nose and the mouth. And then you can add just crazy details. So I might have a huge ear here. And the reason you can have fun with this is because everything is distorted in cubism. So there's no rules. So I can really do whatever I want. So here's my basic abstract shape. So now what I could do is I could experiment with color by using something simple like crayons, outlining it with a black marker, and be good to go. Um, or you could add more. So I'm really thinking COVID. So you might even have, I might even have like this big abstract glove, you know, like that. And then that might be representing a glove for COVID-19. And maybe you're like, oh, I don't want to think about COVID. I just don't want to think about it. That's great. Then don't. But it's also good at times to think about what's going on in the world and not being afraid to actually address problems that you're having in your life right now. So art can be healing. And you can't heal until you're willing to express your pain. So not all art should or needs to be happy and pretty. It's good to express things that make you feel sad or worried or anxious. So 
you can go for it. So I've got my glove here and I might actually think, you know what? I might actually want to add a mask. So I might have this person wearing a mask. Now normally you wouldn't see through the mask so if I wanted to do that I could actually erase all of this. But it's cubism so I can do whatever I want. There's no rules. So I've got my mask, um, I've got my glove, I could even have her squirting hand sanitizer. Um, you know, I could have her have toilet paper for hair. Um, just anything that you want to think of that could tie in your theme um, that you could do. So that's basic cubism. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to incorporate a little bit of Sandra, the artist from Canada. And there's actually a really simple way to do this. You can follow along with this for sure, but you definitely don't have to. But I have all different levels. So if you're at a more advanced level, you can manipulate this even more. If you're just starting out, don't worry about copying. Copying's not cheating. Copying is just recreating something someone else did as long as you're not selling it or claiming it as your own. Um, we're good to go. So go ahead and about in the middle, get out your watercolor paper. And like I said, if you don't have watercolor paper, get out whatever paper you have. You can use newspaper. Mixed media projects are cool. But I do have watercolor paper because I'm going to be watercoloring it. But go ahead and draw a line, almost in the middle, straight down. And then draw a line across. And then I'm gonna draw a parallel line down and over like this. And that's gonna be the nose. And then about right here, wherever you want, draw a line all the way off your page. I'm gonna draw a big elliptical shape there. And I'm gonna draw a big elliptical shape down here. Notice it can go off your page. Now on this side, you can draw any geometric shape you want. You could draw any geometric shape you want here too. You could copy another eye here, maybe just lower. So I'm gonna lower my line and I'm just gonna go ahead and make mine maybe a heart. And then you can go ahead and make the iris of the eye. You can draw in the pupil and you are gonna want an iris and pupil on the other side no matter what shape you did. And then we are gonna go ahead and about in the middle or so, maybe connecting to this line, like just kind of skip it. Draw a line here, and this is where your mouth's gonna go. Your mouth can go wherever you would like. Now you could draw this super simple, like you could just draw a straight line and a curved line up and a curved line down. You don't need to get fancy with this. We can get fancy with our color. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and give mine a little bit of a curve here. And I'm just going to use a straight line, even though normally if I do this in realism, this would be curved down and up. But what's fun about cubism is all those rules can just go away. You can just throw them away. So I have my eyes. I have that. And then this is just going to become the chin. So just kind of sketch whatever shape face you want and no, notice that it's um, distorted. It's not even. That's great. So this will like be my face shape here. You can sketch it and then go over it darker. And then from there, you're going to just add your creativity. So you can start with your basic template like this, distorting the shapes as you want. But from here, you want to go ahead and add some fun pattern. So you can go ahead and draw on a neck. But again, you can do whatever you want. And pattern is repeating a line or an element of art. So I actually, before I did this in my sketchbook that I have, I actually just jotted down some ideas just for a minute. Um, and you can do this as two. So just think of whimsical things like spirals, dashes, zigzag, butterflies. I was thinking nature, butterflies. Um, flowers, trees, and I just kind of doodled. So take a minute, put on your favorite song, and just like chill out and just doodle a little bit because you can use these doodles in this cubism project.
So you're going to use those patterns to make your art more interesting. And there is no rules. There's nothing that you cannot do. You can do absolutely anything. So I might even add a flower here. And what I do is I let my shapes overlap and I erase them afterwards. So I want my flower over hanging here and here. So I just erase those shapes as I go. And I might want another flower here. And I don't have this all planned out in my mind. You could definitely do some sketches if you wanted. I'm just being playful and just doing my thing. I'm just doing whatever I'm feeling. And I'm not even sure what that is. And in this case, I want this flower behind the eye just because that's what I decided. So I'm going to do something like that. And then you're just going to keep adding patterns all throughout your face wherever you think they should go. Okay, so once you have your main drawing, it is time to go ahead and take your black oil pastel if you have it. If you don't have a black oil pastel, I'm gonna use a black crayon. Doo -doo -doo. If you don't have a black crayon, you can use black marker. So the reason why an oil pastel or a crayon is gonna work great for this project is because this is called a resist. Meaning as I watercolor, if I use a black crayon, I'm gonna place really hard. So if you're using a crayon or an oil pastel, you really wanna take your time and press hard and neatly um, on all your shapes. But the reason why you wanna press hard and why this will work so great is because um, watercolor and wax, they'll resist each other and then you don't, will have really nice strong lines. Another thing that you can do, and I've done this before too, is you can use black glue and outline all of your lines with black glue and let it dry. Like say you're working on newspaper. Well, you could use black glue. So what you would need to do is mix like two parts glue with one part black paint um, and then let those be your dark lines. So I'm going to continue, but do consider thick and thin lines like the element of art. So the variety of thick and thin lines might look really good. So you can going to go ahead and outline everything with your black oil pastel or crayon. Okay, so now I didn't outline everything in black. And the reason why was because my crayon broke in half and it got really hard to use little and this end. So I tried, I turned it into a happy accident, I think. And I just started using other colors and then that inspired me to think about laying down some pattern with color because I was thinking how it would show up with my watercolor. So basically what you're going to do is outline everything either in crayons or in your oil pastels. Now oil pastels, you want to be kind of careful because you don't want water mixable oil pastels. There is a difference and oil, water mixable oil pastels you could actually use, but just keep in mind that the color will blend into your watercolor. Now that's going to create another neat effect, but it won't be a resist like a true oil pastel that's not water mixable. Um, so if you're really worried about it, if you're not sure, just lay it down and see what happens. Experiment. So now is the fun part. You're ready to watercolor. There's no rules for how you watercolor. Um, do think about wet color combining with wet color though. And it's <laughs> hilarious. I just dipped my paintbrush in my coffee and I literally have a shirt that makes fun of artists dipping the paintbrushes in the coffee. Okay, that is so hilarious. Anyway, don't do that. Dip it into water. I'm cracking myself up. Okay, and what you're gonna do is you still wanna make washes of all your colors and it's up to you. If you want really strong color, use less water. If you want lighter color, 
use stronger color. You can build on the watercolor techniques that we learned in our other videos. So if you have not watched some of my past uh, watercolor videos, like the one about the palm tree and how to watercolor the sky and beach, that's a good one to use before this one, just so you kind of have an idea. But I'm just going to go ahead and um, think about my warm colors I have on one side of my palette. So warm colors are like red, yellows, and oranges, and I put my cooler colors on the other side just because um, it just helps me think when I'm laying down my color. So I've got pink here, and I'm just going to go ahead and start painting and having fun with it. Notice how as I paint my flower, it's going to resist my... Oops, I'm going to have to set this down. It's going to actually resist that crayon, and it's so cool looking. So it almost doesn't look so cool until you've laid it down. You do want to keep everything nice and wet while you paint, but I have this all one solid color. Now I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of yellow and kind of mix some yellow. And I'm going to actually just drop wet color and wet color. So because this is still wet, I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow here and it'll mix orange and a really pretty fun color. I love doing this with this kind of abstract whimsical art because some, to me the more color the happier it looks. It's really up to you um, what you want to do. And I'm just going to let it do its thing. I'll paint another one along with you. So while I have that color wet, I'm going to think about repeating that color somewhere else and that's going to create balance in my work. So like if I have something like this on the left side and something on the right, it'll create balance for me. So I'm going to decide to paint this flower the same. I'm going to paint it the same pink and that'll kind of create some balance. But to give it some variety, I'm going to actually accident with a different color. I'm going to grab a little bit of this blue because I know that that pink and the blue will make a pretty purple. So colors that are complementary colors are going to mix brown. So if you don't want brown to be mixed and you want a secondary color instead or an intermediate color to mix instead, you're going to need to understand the color wheel. There's lots of videos on YouTube on a basic color wheel and color mixing. And if you're an inexperienced um, painter, I would maybe check out a color wheel um, project but see how I just let that blend and if it's not blending just have clear water right right on it it'll kind of stay in that well because that crayon or that oil pastel is going to keep it it's going to keep it there um I will go ahead and do the mouth and then I'm gonna just go ahead and um Pause the video and just paint it and then I'll come back and talk to you about what I did. And I'm just going to tie in the blue like every other one. And I'm really just again having fun. I'm just laying down my color and I'm thinking, hmm, what color do I want to tap in? I think I'm going to do yellow on the bottom. They're just pretty colors together. And then I'm just going to tap in some yellow at the top and let that mix in. See, I'm doing that. So that's kind of fun. And I feel like my yellow's kind of too flat for me. I don't know. I think I'm going to just dot it with green. Just for fun and just to see what happens. Sorry, dot it with blue, not green. I knew it was going to mix green. I was going to dot it and have fun with that. All right, another thing that you can do is after you're done painting it, after it dries, you could add polka dots with your paint too. So if you want to paint it all, like, flat watercolor and then you could go on top after it dries with watercolor and like do dots on top. That would be really neat too. Just keep in mind when watercolor is wet, it's going to blend and when it's dried, then you can start laying your pattern on top. Okay. So this is so fun. You know, put on your favorite music. I think I'm going to do that and just relax. Just get into that inner moment of peace and whatever emotion you're expressing. And just have fun with color. Don't overthink this project. This is really one that's more like of art therapy so that you're just kind of relaxing. All right, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to do that and I'll come right back. Okay, so oh my gosh, I had so much fun playing with color, dropping color inside color. 
letting some areas dry, going on top of it. Um, I even um, ended up taking a really small detailed brush and I took my black paint and I decided to make some of my crayon black thicker and darker in some areas. Um, so that was kind of something that I brought mine out with. And while it was still wet, I dabbed color in. I let some areas dry. And then I took my small detail brush on top of some areas that were dry, like right here. And so I started to just kind of give some whimsical strokes, just kind of outlining, being pretty sketchy about how I outlined things. But I did switch to really small detail brush to do that. Um, and just be playful and just keep adding color. You can do a couple small studies and then finally, you know, go onto a bigger piece of paper. You can experiment with how do you like the look of crayons versus oil pastels. If you do have a lot of different um, art materials at home, experiment. Maybe you wanna start laying on top some acrylic paint if you have it at home. Or how about puffy paint? Oh, I love puffy paint. Um, so, you know, if you had really fun colors of puffy paint, you could try, after this dries, outlining it now with puffy paint. That would look so cool, be so fun. I don't have any. But we could always Amazon it right now since we can't go to stores. Um, you can still buy art supplies on Amazon. So if it's something you wanna do, um, this is just a great mixed media project. You could even do tissue paper. Whatever you happen to have on hand, um, experiment with it and see how it works and please share them with me um, post your picture under comments or you can email me at artwanderingstudios at gmail.com I'd love to see your work and maybe I'll share it in the next video have a great day and until the next art lesson take care of you